All right. Well, good evening, Discover. It's great to see you all. We, uh, I see a lot of people still finishing up their wings, which is awesome. I did not make the same mistake I made last time. I have not eaten, <laughs> so I will not be, <laughs> won't have the same issues I had last time. <laughs> but burping. Just burping, that's all. Just burping. That's it. That's it. So as we get started this morning, or this morning, this evening, um, we're going to sing a song. It's called Relentless, and it sings about the relentless nature of the love of Christ. And I've always really, really loved describing uh, Christ's love for us as relentless because uh, I don't remember where I heard this, but they were saying, you know, if you, you can be running in the opposite direction of Christ, as far away from him as you can, and then that moment when you realize you can't do life on your own, and that we need Christ, and you make that 180 and turn around, which is what repentance is. He's right there, and he's been there the entire time. He is, a, he is relentlessly pursuing us with his love. So I just really love that, that picture. So let's sing this song together as we start. Sounds a new beginning. As distant hearts begin believing, redemption's bid is unrelenting. Your love goes on. Your love goes on. You carry us. Carry us, carry us when the world gives way. Cover us, cover us with your endless grace. Your love is relentless. Your love is relentless. Your love is relentless. Love is relentless. The time is up for chasing shadows. And you gave the world a light to follow. A hope that shines beyond tomorrow. A hope that shines beyond tomorrow. Your love goes on. Your love goes on. Oh, your love goes on. You carry us, and you carry us, carry us when the world gives way. You cover us, you cover us with your endless grace. Your love is relentless. Your love is relentless. Your love is relentless. Your love is relentless. Tearing through the veil of darkness, breaking every chain you set us free, fighting for the furthest heart you give. take just a few minutes, continue to sh uh, fellowship, say hey to each other, and then Scott will be up in just a second.
Hey, everybody. It's good to see you. Good to see you. Go ahead. And I said this uh, at our first Thursday gathering. Don't panic. I'm not going to preach. So I'll say it again. Don't panic. I'm not going to preach. But I do want to share with you just a couple of thoughts just to, you know, help us kind of get through the, the, the moments that I, I, I kind of feel like I know that for me personally, just sort of the things that have been happening in the world the last couple of weeks, days, and just all of the different stuff that's kind of been, you know, floating around. I was thinking about this the other day, and I thought, man, I want to share this on Thursday night. There's an old phrase that comes from the Bible that you probably have heard before. It's called, be conformed to the likeness of Christ. And that's, if you've spent much time in church, that's not a real foreign concept. It's something that we kind of grow up with and that we're taught and that we try to affirm from time to time that, you know, we are, are supposed to, as Christ followers, uh, progressively over the course of our existence as Christians, become more and more like Jesus. You know, we get that. We understand that. Uh, frankly, I think all of us is pretty, pretty quick like we, as we understand that concept, we also kind of look at it and think, eh, okay. And, you know, sometimes that's easier than other times. And sometimes it's just totally difficult, at least for me, to, to kind of be like Jesus, uh, especially when, you know, the world just seems to be like we've been talking on Sundays, constantly saying, no, no, don't do that. No, don't do that. That's ridiculous. Don't do that. And I've even kind of thought about it from time to time, feeling like it's, you know, sw talk about swimming upstream kind of against the current, that it's, it's easier, I think, to not be like Jesus than it is to be like Jesus, at least in this world that we're living in. And so, you know, that's kind of the temptation is just to say, you know, never mind. But I really feel like these days it's getting so difficult to live in this world whether you follow Jesus or not, that we should really reevaluate and take a deep, a hard look at what the Bible is saying and why it's saying it, because I think there's actually some freedom, some joy, some blessings that are so desperately needed that would come our way if we would be more like Jesus, if we would conform more to his likeness. In the book of Colossians, in the third chapter, Paul said this, Set your minds on things above, not on earthly things. For you died, and your life is now hidden with Christ in God. When Christ, who is your life, appears, then you will appear with him in glory. So put to death, therefore, whatever belongs to your earthly nature, sexual morality, impurity, lust, evil desires, greed, which is idolatry. Because of these, the wrath of God is coming you used to walk in those ways, in the life you once lived. But now you must rid yourself of all of these things, anger, rage, malice, slander, filthy language from your lips. Don't lie to each other, since you've taken off your old self with its practices and have put on the new self, which is being renewed in the knowledge, in the image of the Creator. Here there is no Greek or Jew, circumcised or uncircumcised, barbarian, Scythian, slave or free, but Christ is all and is in all. All of a sudden, I'm looking at that list of things and not seeing a heavy to-do list. I'm looking at that list going, man, that sounds pretty good. It sounds pretty fresh. It sounds pretty, pretty nice compared to just sort of like what you experience if you wade into Twitter or you get too far into social media or you flip on the nightly news, you know, or, you know, just even... you. you kind of start talking to coworkers or neighbors or whatever. You know, it just seems like so much these days. Being like Jesus might not just be a, something that the world could really use from you and me, but something that you and I could really, you know, wonderfully use, which is the whole beauty of why God said in the first place that he wanted us to do that, because he wants us to know his joy. He wants his joy to be in us and for us to be complete in that joy. So I want to challenge you tonight as we lift up our voices and we worship God that you really contemplate letting this be um, a motivating moment to say, Jesus, I, I, I need to be more like you. I need it because this world is just parching my soul. It's leaving me so barren and so dry. 
And the only thing that's going to work, the only thing that's going to really renew me is to be, like it said, in your newness and of your newness. Let me finish this the same way that Paul did, looking at verse 15 of the, 13, of the third chapter. He said, let the peace of Christ rule in your hearts, since as members of one body you were called to peace. And be thankful. Let the word of Christ dwell in you richly as you teach and admonish one another with all wisdom, and as you sing psalms, as you sing hymns, as you sing spiritual songs with gratitude in your hearts to God. And whatever you do, whether in word or deed, do it in the name of the Lord Jesus, giving him thanks to God the Father through him. Let's pray. Father, I just pray that tonight we would, we'd long for you. We'd long for a life that is marked by you, Jesus. We would long to not just know who you are, but to live through you and to live for you and to live about you. And that that would cause a conformity, that would cause a, a change away from the, the destructive patterns of this world and into the, the pleasant life that you want your followers to know. You never promised us that it would all be easy, but you have promised to walk through it all with us. And I just pray that that would be the desire of our hearts tonight and that we would lift up our voices singing to you now in this moment, just proclaiming how great you are and how much we need you. God, I pray these things in your name. Amen. I want to just encourage us, as Scott just did, as we continue in community and fellowship, uh, let's join together and sing, uh, sing a few songs. And during this time, if you want to stand and sing, feel free if you want to sit and pray, whatever you want to do, if you need to go to the, to the back and kind of walk around, whatever, whatever you feel, I just encourage you to uh, just kind of feel what the Spirit is leading you to do. Uh, during this time. So let's sing together. Yeah. 
down our idols so give us clean hands give us pure hearts let us not lift our souls to another so give us clean hands give us pure hearts let us not lift our souls to another and oh God, let us be a generation that seeks, that seeks your face, oh God of Jacob. And oh God, let us be a generation that seeks, that seeks your face, oh God of Jacob. Bow our hearts. We bow our hearts. We bend our knees. Oh Spirit, come make us some We turn our eyes from evil things. And oh Lord, we cast down our
seeks your face, oh God of Jacob. Oh, we seek your face, oh God of Jacob. Let's sing, we seek your face. Death could not hold you, the veil tore before you, you silenced the boast of sin and grave. The heavens are roaring, the praise of your glory, and for you. What 
a beautiful name it is, the name of Jesus. Father, as we are just here together again in, in community and fellowship and worshiping you, Father, we we just lift you up right now and tell you that you are beautiful, Lord. Your name is above any other name. It's a wonderful name. It's a powerful name, Lord. It freed us from sin and from death. Lord, we thank you for the forgiveness that you promise through the death and resurrection of your son. When we say we, we just can't do it on our own anymore. We don't want to be in charge of our lives anymore, Lord. We want you to be in charge. You, you are on the throne of our lives, God. God, I just thank you for just this group of people, this community. Thank you for this time that we've had together. We love you. Amen. Well, I'm glad you guys were here, and I hope that uh, you are full of not only chicken wings, but of the Holy Spirit and that uh, this will be something that renews you and challenges you and uh, carries you. We will have uh, another Thursday night gathering. Uh, the next one is in July. I was just trying to do the math. I think, okay, the 7th, the 14th, the 20th, right? Or is it 21st? <laughs> 21st. Thursday, Thursday. Okay, I'm going with Bruce. I trust Bruce. Oh, come on. <laughs> I think it's Bruce Lysui for the win. <laughs> Thursday night, July 21st. So uh, if, you can, if you can make it, please be back here. Uh, invite friends to come with you. Uh, obviously, it won't be a holiday weekend, beginning of holiday weekend that week. So we hope to get this place out and, and have some more great food. We're going to have that uh, the Mexican place back that did the food truck the last time. So they're going to come back for that next one as well. So, yes, sir, Mr. Sandwick. It's great to be here. It's good to have you, man. Yeah. Isn't it, though? It's just good, huh? And it's good, it's good. So. Anyway, thanks for being here so much tonight, guys. Love you all. We'll see you again. Uh, Sunday, for sure, we'll be online. We're still trying to figure out if we're going to do it live. I'll talk to a few of you tonight, but uh, for sure, we'll be on, online Sunday morning at 1030. So wherever you are, if you can't be here, flip us on online. Um, we'll talk more in just a minute off camera and everything. So anyway, goodbye. See you later.